This is the 2009. Yes, you have a 60 percent of uh, Merlot and um, 40 percent Cabernet Franc. Yeah, that, 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 that's a little bit low for a little bit low for Cabernet Franc. Yes, yes. yes. The nose is a. Um, um, well, this is it's a just a, a coffee uh, impression when you taste it. Huh? Espresso coffee, yes. Espresso yes, 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 yes. Very, very deep fruit. Um, but you're right, you know something? That's the first, th almost the first thing that hits the nose, this espresso coffee note. That's fascinating. But you have a lot of complexity, a lot of black fruit, and uh, epis, spicy, liquids. And just a little minty impression. It's a, just maturity elegant of the Cabernet Franc. You know what's impressive is this, um, even though this is so recent, 2009, it already has on the nose that very rich sensation. That's, mm. that's amazing. For a wine senior. You have a lot of concentration mm. and, uh, and the palate is a. Uh, is a, I think it's a, the touch of the tannin is a, is a cashmere tannin. Wow. A, and, um, it's like silky. It's like silky. It's silky, it's silky yeah. smooth, but there's some spice there too. You can still pick up the spice yes. you know, yes. on the tongue. Very right. deep food, beautifully balanced tannins. Um, you know, for, for a wine that's so young, this has so much body and so much texture to it. But this, you know, sir, this is very, very impressive. This is, um, this is tremendous wine. Tremendous effort. Hello, 2009. It's interesting to compare to the two vintages and 2009 and 2009. Because in a, the two vintage have not a lot of similitudes. It's two great vintage. But in 2010, you have 60% of Cabernet Franc. In 2009, you are 40. Oh, so okay, 2009 is a typical vintage with a large proportion of Merlot, and 2010 is a typical vintage with a large proportion of Cabernet Franc. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. 2010 for me is a. This is the color. Very deep, deep purple. Right, deep purple. Yes. And you see, you smell the wine. Oh, that's smooth. It's a typical nose of the great, great ripe Cabernet. Wow, wow. That's just, that's beautiful. Very fresh. Very fresh. You have a lot of red fruit, right? But you have a um, cassis, black rent, and uh, fram framboise. Is, uh, 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 raspberry, 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 raspberry framboise. Uh -huh, uh -huh, absolutely. And um, you have a zest of bergamot. What is the name of bergamot? Uh, oh, that, that's um, difficult for me. Earl Grey tea. Bergamot. Uh, bergamot. Bergamot. Yeah, the spice. And the flavor the, the herb. The fruit on the nose here is just tremendous. Wow. A little impression of um, Zan and uh, Li Liquais, Regis. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. huh? mm. mm. The palate is an is amazing palate. It's very, very strong wine, so very elegant. And you have a lot of density. But you know, I find it interesting how you can produce a wine that can be both elegant and have density at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, uh, you know, the, the structure is just tremendous. And you're right, there, there's a very definite, there's a sense of licorice on this, a very dark fruit. Very, very, very fresh. Uh, this is just, and, and, and you're right, a totally different presentation from the 09. Very, very different. It's so very different. It's a two outstanding vintage, but with a two different proportion of the grape varieties. The typical Chalamar with a large proportion of Merlot, I think it's Pomerol wine, I like, and typical vintage with a large proportion of Cabernet Franc, like uh, Left Bank 
vintage. But I think it's a missing wine Chardonnay you know, because it's possible to play with another one, to play with the Cabernet. But the Cabernet Franc is is is, is a level of in the middle of the freshness of the Cabernet Franc. Well, it is a redefinition of of the 2010. You have the Merlot, the fruity Merlot, but the, the freshness is just around. 2010, after 10 years and 20 years, I suppose it's an amazing vintage in Bordeaux. Absolutely. It's an outstanding vintage in Bordeaux, the 2010 yeah, Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Right. Uh, Pierre, just two short questions before we leave. First of all, what, what is your definition for you of a great one? What do you think of when somebody says, what for you, what for Pierre Lock is a great wine? I think it's a, it's a great wine, the first and the freshness is very important, and also and the elegance and the touch of the, of the tannin, the very subtle and so very elegant tannin. I think for me the great wine is, uh, is young wine, is good to drink with a uh, a lot of potential, but it's a fantastic wine. It travel in the time with a lot of elegance. I think it's a, it's a elegant traveling for the wine. is for me the great definition of the great wine. <laughs> and, and the last question for you I have is, what do you think the greatest challenge or challenges will be for Bordeaux wine producers going forward in the future? I think for the Bordeaux wine, it's really important to, to keep the diversity of the different terroir, because in Bordeaux you have a lot of richesses of the different terroir. So uh, it's very important to uh, each chateau sign um, a star. Merci beaucoup. Sorry for my petit Thank you so much. <laughs> thank, thank you for your time today. And these are just amazing wines. Um, you should buy a case of all of these. These are just tremendous wines. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Thank you.